Guys, I'm so excited about this. All summer long, along with regular Scam Nation episodes, we are going to be running our first mini series. From Nate Staniforth, it's called American Magic, and it is a deep dive into the finest minds working in magic today. Yes, I do show up at some point, but don't hold that against it. It's awesome stuff, and Nate is incredibly talented. In fact, if you want to see episodes early, make sure to subscribe to his channel, but join us every week this summer as we learn the fundamentals from the pros. That is not what you want to see out of your engine. I have a meeting today in New York, and in three weeks I have a show in Seattle. <laughs> New York on one side of the country, Seattle on the other. Maybe I should just drive. We can't wait to get started with an incredible magician who also hosted Discovery Channel's hit show, Breaking Magic. Yeah, he's got a new memoir coming out called Here is Real Magic. Welcome to stand for this year. I had this idea that along the way I would meet up with my favorite magicians because uh, because why not? The gift of magic to me is the gift of astonishment, the art of astonishment, the art of this moment that you know isn't real yet is so real. Get the hell out of so here's the bad news. The engine has overheated, and the other bad news is that I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm in town today for a meeting. Uh, 38th and Broadway, please. Here's a story. For the past four years, I've been writing a book about magic. And I'm on my way to the publisher right now for one last meeting. But after that, I'm done. You can just let me out here. Thank you very much. The problem is that the book won't be published until January 16th, which means I still have a few months between now and then, and I'm not sure what to do next. So I'm on the hunt for new ideas. So the plan for this series is simple. I'm going to drive across the country, and along the way, I'll meet up with some of my favorite magicians. We'll talk about creativity and invention, theory and practice, preparation and performance. We'll talk about how to build a career and how to reach an audience, and how to take a magic trick and make it feel like magic. in New York, the magic scene was pretty transient. I have been doing a show every month or so here in different bar basements. <laughs> so you <laughs> have fans who come to see you, like wherever you are. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, um, I kind of started curating a newsletter and getting people to come to these shows. So you build your Again. audience here. Yeah, build your audience and here. it seems like New York is a place where you could do that because this is, is like the capital of everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is, but it's... it's certainly disheartening too sometimes because sometimes it's either oversaturated in a lot of ways or or your audiences are have seen everything sure or um or you can't get a space because space is far and few between and expensive and right. so like so sometimes it's just easier to just think about all the things you want to do and never actually do them right so that's yeah. and and you could say the same for artists and actors in new york too who are trying to make theater and trying to put together these shows. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's hard to just put something up. I mean, that's kind of the hardest part yeah. is to just do the work. It's right? easy to think of yourself as, it's easy for your art to be 
like a state of being rather than a verb, right? Like it's sure. easy to be a yeah. magician. It's hard to actually make it happen 100%. and do it. This is Vinny DePonto. He's one of my favorite mentalists in the world. We've been friends for years, and when I decided to do this series, I asked if he'd sit down with me to talk about his work. It does seem like, as a magician or as a mentalist, you're tapping into something that is, that is deeper and more powerful than the audience is expecting because mm -hmm. you know they're they're at a theater show sure but like the other night i had this guy get up and start screaming like he was just he lost it and and that doesn't happen at yeah. the symphony right yeah, you, sure, have sure. you have a you yeah. have a different experience yeah. there but like surprise is easy to explain sure. right but yeah. but that that combination of joy and surprise and fear like that what is it what is that well it's it's immersive you know magic there's this term going around in New York is like immersive theater, right? Mm -hmm. Immersive theater. It's kind of like this new trending thing. And it's essentially theater with that's site specific, that has mobile narrative, that basically has the actors interact with you as the audience member. Right. But I say that magic is actually the first immersive theater. Yeah. Magic was the first art form that needed an audience in order for it to be magic, right? A dancer can dance in a room and it still be dance. A, a painter can paint and it's still a painting. But you need an audience for magic. You need an audience to experience wonder. And so this this kind of immersive quality is is something that we have a responsibility as performers to give to our audiences. What's the most amazing thing you've ever seen? <laughs> oh my God. I mean, um, okay. So here's here's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I know. I have a friend who's a chef. Yeah. And whenever he gets together with his chef friends, they all talk about like the best meal they've ever had. And I love hearing magicians, this is the time where my head just exploded. Mm -hmm. um, is there, do you have a moment like that for you? Like some piece in, that you Specifically saw? in magic. Yeah, like, like a, a performance magic piece. piece. Yeah. You know, obviously Darren Brown amazes me constantly. Right. Teller amazes me constantly because they really draw out um, the storytelling and the emotion, like they really kind of pull that out. Right. And it's really sweet and like, you know, cathartic. But um, I can't, I can't even think about the sure. most amazing no, that's, thing. That's it. all right. I mean, <laughs> I'll probably think about it after we're done. You just <laughs> like, don't want. You know, it, that, it's that me, something. isn't it? You don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's this lottery trick that was absolutely amazing. It's all right. Uh, I'll edit this out. <laughs> I started touring when I was 22 years old. Thank you very much, have a good evening. And by now, I've done over 2,000 shows in 49 of the 50 states. But the thing about going on tour is that all you ever see of a city is the airport, and the hotel, and the rental car facility, and the venue. And you do that over and over and over again. It's possible to travel across the entire country and feel like you didn't see any of it. So I want this trip to be different. This time I want to move slowly. I want to take back roads, I want to take side streets, and I want to see everything. Okay, probably not everything, but I want to see a lot. Anyway, welcome to the series, everybody. I think this is going to be cool. See you tomorrow.